Having trouble winning games in Madden 24? <laughs> the answer might be something as simple as a coaching adjustment you're not using. So whether you're struggling on offense, that was easy. Can't get any stops on defense. No, God, please, no, 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 no. This is the video for you. So if you want to see what the best coaching adjustments are to win more games in Madden 24, stick around after the intro. For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor, MMOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. In today's video, I'm going to tell you guys the best coaching adjustments to use as of right now, post-patch in Madden 24. Now, I did a video on this topic not too long ago. It might have been three, four weeks ago. But since then, EA did an update on October 4th or 5th, and they changed a lot of things, including the coaching adjustments themselves, where they removed one of the options in play receiver or play ball, which was one of the most popular ones that I pretty much focused on every single time I made one of these videos. Well, that's gone completely. That plus the fact that they really changed how matching zone coverages work to the point where it really changes whether you want to go with zone coverage match to default or if you want to change your your curl flats and stuff like that a lot of things change so this is the perfect opportunity for making an update about this video but before i continue as always if you guys would like to see me continue to do update videos on things like this when coaching adjustments change or when the game changes with updates i like to try to do this at least once a month or once every month or two as long as i feel like there's enough changes that really warrants me doing a new video so if you guys want to see me continue this series as always make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comment section and if there's any coaching adjustment suggestions that i make that you think you have a better one let everybody know in the comment section as well because it's always helpful to have a second opinion now we're going to start off on offense because this one's always the quickest there's really not a lot that i touch here i've had people in the comment section every once in a while say they like to change their deep pass catching or their intermediate pass catching i don't think it makes sense to change any of these because any of these things you can set this to you can do with your controller during the play so if you want to trigger a possession catch you can just do you know wire triangle if you want to trigger a rack catch you can just hit the um you know hit the x button or the um, what would that be a square button on a playstation so there's really no point to set that pre-play because you might be in a situation where the automatic where it'll automatically trigger those type of catches and then it might cost you a completion based on the fact that that wasn't the best completion to use in that moment. The next one is blocking, which this, if they're going to take one out of the game like they did on defense, they should take this one out of the game because it makes absolutely no sense. Uh, as nobody's going to want to use either one of these, con uh, conservative or aggressive. If you use conservative, your, your blockers are going to let people run by a lot quicker so that they don't get holding penalties. And if you use, use aggressive, you're just going to get a bunch of holding penalties. Now, I did have somebody in the comments section recently tell me that they did did keep blocking on aggressive for an entire game and they rarely got any holding penalties so I decided to test this theory out so I just basically went to an offline game and ran the ball a bunch of times to see how many holding penalties that I would actually draw and sure enough I did get a penalty on my on just the sixth play of the game but that could have been a fluke so I kept going and then sure enough I got a penalty two plays later so that was enough evidence for me that this still doesn't work and that only leaves one left which is ball carry and this is really the only one that I ever touch on offense you have three different options here but I really find that only two are worth worthwhile and that's balanced or conservative as i feel aggressive probably makes it too easy to fumble it's not necessarily worth it when it comes to ball carry though it's really more important what type of player you are or what type of offense you run more importantly what type of player on your offense is going to be handling the ball if you're running mostly with just the running back then it's fine to leave it on balanced or even there i wouldn't mind going conserve or going aggressive because running backs are programmed to fumble a lot less than non-running back players like quarterbacks and receivers if you're going to run with a quarterback or a receiver if you run a lot of end arounds if you run a lot of qb draws you're going to want to set this to conservative you're going to fumble a lot no matter what you do no matter how much you hold the uh the protect ball button which is the r1 rb button if you don't have this on conservative any non-running back is going to fumble probably on average at least once or twice every 10 carries now nothing's really changed on the offensive side that's pretty much the same stuff that i said to use last time but there's been a lot of changes on defense more specifically they removed one entirely which is ball near defense so that one there i mean i did a lot of experiments with that in previous videos and i saw a clear difference but ea from what i heard somewhere along the line i don't know how credible this was but i saw somewhere that they removed it because they said that it wasn't working uh, and i saw a clear difference when i was doing my previous videos on this topic there weren't huge differences it was usually like a difference of like um, maybe 
one more interception from playing ball or one less completion from from playing receiver so it wasn't that big a deal and maybe it was kind of spotty maybe that's why they took it out maybe it wasn't always working because i noticed what i used to mess with that all the time and sometimes i wouldn't get any i wouldn't see any difference from it so it's not probably a huge loss but that is one of the biggest changes the second biggest change is is going to be when it comes to zone coverage and your zone drops because they changed a lot of defenses. They fixed a lot of defenses when it comes to matching principles and made them a lot better. So it's going to change how I address those topics. But I'll get to that in a moment. I'm going to start off at the top here, and I'm going to start off with auto flip. Now, auto flip is something that you really only need to do if you want to flip the play. You can't flip the play with auto flip on. You can't flip it pre-snap. Like even in the practice mode, it'll ask you to turn it off. So I don't mess with that too much. But like I said, there is scenarios where you can take that off just to set up a play better before the snap. Because let's be honest, a lot of times your opponent will try to hike the ball before you get your defense set up. And flipping a play on defense is a recipe for disaster. As a lot of times your guys won't even get in position in time. You give up easy one-play touchdowns if your opponent catches you flipping a defense out of position. So there are scenarios where that's useful, but I usually leave it on. Other than that, auto alignment. This one here really important to have this in base every scheme that i put out on defense i have uh, the same adjustments where i use base because i don't want my opponent to know what you know what setup i'm in prior to the snap default is okay but at the end of the day a good opponent that can read a defense is going to pick a default alignment apart you really want to take away the, you only really have on a, a given play like five seconds to to run a play or to figure out what defense your opponent is in but if you have it on default, they can basically see what defense you're in. They got 30 seconds to come up with a plan that's six times longer than normal. So it's really not worth it because any good player is going to say, okay, I see him. He's in cover three because he's in a default auto alignment or he's in a cover zero. They're going to go to their play for that and they're going to pick you apart. So it's really not worth to have this in default. And one of the most important ones out of all the ones I'm going to show you today, the one that I think is the most useful is probably auto alignment to base. Next up, we have cornerback matchups. This one's pretty easy. Uh, it's pretty much for me it's always by overall unless you have a huge speed disadvantage then you're going to want to go by speed or unless you have a huge height disadvantage that you can go by height so if you're playing against Tyree Kill, you might want to go by speed. If you're playing against Mike Evans or um, you know somebody like Mike Williams, a six foot five, six foot six, you know receiver that can wash you, you might want to go by height. It really depends on your personnel. But I typically go by overall until I see an issue. Next up, we have option defense, and this one I don't really have to explore this too much because I've explored this in videos in the past. You always want to go conservative, and that's because you need somebody to focus on stopping the quarterback because the quarterback will just get a free lane if you don't. Next up, we got tackle and strip ball now I always put my tackling to aggressive because this will make your AI defenders attempt hit sticks and which can get more of a chance next up we have strip ball and tackling now these I'm gonna go over the same because they're both aimed at getting more fumbles and I put them on different settings I'll put strip ball on conservative which is a lower chance of breaking tackles which is what I want but they also will not attempt uh, to strip the ball then I'll also put my tackling on aggressive and the reason I put tackling on aggressive is because that will increase the chance of hit stick fumbles so it's really um, you kind of get the best of both worlds here you won't get strip ball fumbles but you don't really get those anyway and I feel like doing that is not worth the penalty of the face mask that you'll constantly get now if you go to tackling conservative you'll notice that one of the cons is increases chances of allowing yards after contact another benefit of once again having on aggressive is that at least you won't have those fall forward animations as much so when it gets to fumbles themselves i don't feel like neither one of these do a lot but i do feel like it helps me out with making sure that i get secured tackles when i have conservative on strip ball and i also don't allow my defender or my opponent to get extra yards which is one of the benefits of tackling aggressive and then last but not least we're going to get to zone drops and zone coverage which is one of the biggest things when it comes to the patch is zone coverage in match has really been uh fixed quite a bit but this is another scenario we're gonna have to figure out what type of player you are or rather what type of defense you use if you're using match defenses you're going to want to make sure that you have zone coverage to match so that you see the full benefit of them now one of the things that i don't think people realize enough is how many different match defenses there are probably half the defenses in the game right now are matching zone coverage at least half the zone coverage and i'll show you what i'm talking about most people think that matching defenses are just cover for quarters and i've run cover for quarters a lot more now because cover for quarters was majorly improved in the patch but cover for quarters is not the only matching defense. Matching defenses, you can tell because typically they have a light purple zone 
or a, a light blue zone if it's a cover two, which you can see here, if we look at the entire uh, play selection, we have the SS Blitz three, which you see is a dark purple compared to the cover four quarters. If you look at the cover two, you can see it's a dark blue compared to if I roll down a little bit and I see like a cover six trap here, they have a light blue, which means that that's going to be a soft squat. So we're gonna start off with uh, regular cover two, which is gonna be a cloud flat cover two, just to show you guys how these cornerbacks react because it's really good that's really what i want to focus on here i'm not really focusing on um you know anything else as you can see he does take the short route because once again the cloud flats are prioritizing deep i just want to see how these cornerbacks react as typically um you know like i said they'll, they'll prioritize these deep routes we got a wheel route on one side which is a good cover two concept you can see how when he turns to run with them he's not really doing it in a way that he's trying to cut off the route he's kind of doing it more of like a prevent style but he is turning to run with them at least which is something that you know cloud flats will do for certain routes like this that are designed to be cover two if i go to the other side of the field you can see how we have a corner route and once again the cornerback is not turning to uh to to basically watch the receiver he's just basically watching the area and watching the quarterback's eyes so if this route is run a little bit longer if the, if the quarterback didn't throw the ball out so quickly there's enough space enough area that this guy probably would have ran to a depth where the cornerback would have been too shallow and he wouldn't have saw it he could have got open so that's one of the reasons that i don't necessarily like this coverage as much as matching cover two so next we'll go ahead and we'll run it against cover two with soft squats this is a matching cover two and we'll see how we get a completely different look in this area on the outside cornerbacks because they're going to react really differently. So I'm going to take this guy off. And now you can see Slay just jumps the route. And I was hoping they would get a little bit deeper than that. But let's go ahead and let's watch the replay and see what happened. As um, you can see, number one, it's much more aggressive. Like I said, he's not playing an area. He's not playing a prevent. He's playing a receiver now. He's man-matched already within five yards of the play. He has man-matched the Ferguson. And that's why he jumps this route like a man defender would rather than uh, just dropping back and making sure nothing gets behind him. He's playing much more aggressively for the ball, which is one of the reasons that I think this is one of the better ways to go. If I go to the other side, once again, we have that corner route, which you saw before, he really just didn't let him get behind him. Now he's turning and running with him like a man defender once again. So if that ball is thrown in this area, he's going to he's gonna play it like a man coverage cornerback and do a better job of making a play on it. And that's not even the only matching zone coverages. We also have cover three sky, which you can see is a dark purple zone once again. If I go ahead and I drop down to I see cover three seam, you can see we have the light purple, which is going to be a matching cover three. That's the main difference when you hear the difference between cover three sky and cover three seam is one's matching, one's not. So you'll get the benefit of all these matching concepts just as long as you have your zone cover set to match and you don't touch your flats you leave your flats alone you leave them on default because if you have these they will override that so that leads me to my last uh you know topic which is going to be the zone coverages and number one i'll start with zone drop hooks i don't typically touch these i leave these to default i'm running a lot of matching coverages since the since the patch i think matching is best but if you're not running matching coverages if you want to still want to set your flats you can do that but that would like i said before would only really be things like cover through sky cover for drop cover to um you know tampa two things that are not matching principal uh, zone coverages so if you're gonna run a non-matching zone coverage or you want to just make sure that you have a specific area of the field locked down like your opponent's running a lot of you know drags or they're running a lot of flat routes you could always set your zone drop flats to zero or five five is going to be best for those type of routes for drags and for flats although zero is going to be best for for routes behind the line of scrimmage or even run defense i find zero flats are the best because they get to the line of scrimmage faster uh, I also find that curl flats are still best at 15, although sometimes I'll move it to 20. 15 is good for uh, slants and deep crossers, although 20 sometimes is best for the deep crossing routes. So it really depends on what your opponent is running. But at the end of the day, these are probably your two best zone drops still. I still run 5 and 15 if I'm going to set these from time to time. My wrong there's something that you use and you think it works better let me know in the comment section other than that i'll have videos popping up about some of the offenses and defenses i'm using right now if you want to learn more about those and that's it thanks for watching man make sure out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below